So you thought the Champions League was the best club competition out there, right? Wrong. Introducing. We've taken the Champions League table and flipped it around to include the worst teams from every single league included and pin them up against each other in an imperialism style tournament. But as usual, there's a twist. Not only are these the worst teams in the league, but the winner of this tournament will not be the best of the worst, but they will be the worst of the worst. <laughs> This would be the perfect time for Tottenham to finally get some silverware. But unfortunately for them, they're not included, so their cabinet's still empty. <laughs> so let's hop into this thing and see who sucks the most. As per usual, we have our wheel and our random direction selector that will tell a team to move in a specific direction. They come up against a team. The battle to the death. And if it's an open country, they take control. Let's go. Our first match is in Italy with the creamy knees coming up against the confused dogs. Verona was all over creaminess for most of the first half, but like their name suggests, Marco Benassi strikes first with a creamy goal to give them the lead. But 54 minutes in, Verona gets lucky on a deflection that bounces all the way over to a wide open Ngongi, and he heads it home and we're tied 1-1. We take this all the way to extra time with no action until Mr. Dessert scores a wonderful goal to give Creamy Knees the lead. Little do they know that this is going to knock them out of the tournament and the confused dogs are advancing. The first territory move that we see in this episode is Hertha Berlin moving northeast to take over Poland. No comment. Our first cross-border conflict comes in the form of Spezia taking on Reed from Austria. Spezia is hoping to play as bad as their kits today and lose so they can advance. But unlucky for them, they end up finding the back of the net first as Holmes smashes an absolute screamer cross goal into the top left corner to give them the lead. And Emil Holm just simply cannot stop scoring and adds to their tally only a few minutes later. But Mikic and Reed had other ideas as he sprints through the defense, bodies off a defender, and smashes it, brings the deficit down to one. And Reed only had the momentum for a little bit until Green Sauce here ends up finding the ball at his feet after a turnover and his teammate runs away from it, so he just smashes it home near post, but then decides to be toxic and shushes the crowd. In response to Verde's shush, Reed run down to the other end to get a sweaty goal for themselves to bring the deficit down to one again. Verde being the toxic sweat he is, sprints through the defense, finds a little bit of room, and absolutely bangs it past the keeper. Celebrates like he just won the game, and he did, but in this instance, it's not good. Thankfully, I like Red Salsa anyways. Spezia is out of the tournament. Following up that goal fest, we have an absolute snoozer between Southampton and Ross County. Contrary to many of your opinions, probably, Ross County ends up taking the lead very early in the game thanks to a curling effort from Edwards, and that's how everything's going to end up. <laughs> Premier League. Best league in the world. Ross County is out. Southampton stays alive. Germany sees some more action here as Schalke is selected to go against the Belgian side, Saran. Nine minutes in, Tarot gets the ball in a little bit of space. Defender doesn't close him down, and he slots it home to make it 1-0 Schalke. 60 minutes later, Tarot finds an opportunity, adds to his tally by hitting it near post top corner to advance the lead to two. But out of nowhere, off brain KDB, aka Bernie Sanders, aka Bernier, slips behind the defense and makes it 2-1 to one Schalke, but that would not be enough to save the German team as they are the winners of this match, but they are out of the tournament. We stay in North Central Europe as Stuttgart is taking on Reed in the next match. Reed is coming into this with one loss under their belt, and that trend is looking to continue as Gyasi and Stuttgart hit on the counterattack only 10 minutes into it. In surprising fashion, Reed is able to bring it back, level to 1-1, but then Stuttgart isn't happy about it. Endo ends up coming down the pitch and slipping through the defense, makes it 2-1, and Stuttgart is out. Move down to southwestern Europe as Pacos is taking on Maritimo in the Portuguese league. It took a while, but in the 76th minute, Maritimo has a corner, and Zenedine gets his head to the ball and squeaks it right past the keeper to open up the scoring. And now that somebody else scored, Pablo Moreno wants to get in on the fun, gets a cross goal sweaty pass, and slots it home to close the scoring, and that sends Pacos through to the next round. Hopping over the English Channel to the country also known as Britain, Leicester is taking on Leeds. We have quite the match here. Continuing his run of form from the Premier League Imperialism video we did on this channel, link is up there, Harvey Barnes opens up the scoring with a great finesse shot into the top left corner. 
Leeds ends up leveling the match on the stroke of half time, and they keep that momentum coming out of half time as Nunto sprints down the wing, finds an open angle, and gives the lead to Leeds. But Leicester was not yet done as Yori Thielman seals it up and ties it 2-2. Two two. And things stayed level all the way up until penalties. Leeds has their first attempt blocked, some people make some shots, and Leeds' fourth shot also gets blocked. Leicester doesn't capitalize on the opportunity to advance there. Weston McKinney scores to put Leicester in a little bit of pressure, but Iheanacho says, I don't believe in pressure, and smashes it into the top left corner with some oomph, and Leicester is gone. <laughs> Swinging back to Germany, Hertha Berlin is taking on FC Augsburg. Hertha's keeper makes an absolutely crazy save. Augsburg recycles the ball over to the left wing and we see an absolutely crazy curled shot hit off the post and in the back of the net to give Augsburg the lead. Late in the second half, the super sub Jovetic comes on and gets a lucky bounce back to him and ends up slotting it near post. The tie does not last long as Baljo sneaks behind the back line, puts one past the keeper and sends Augsburg packing and Hertha to the next round. For the first and only time in this episode, we see a pure Uber Eats matchup as Troyes hopes to keep a calm head against Angers. I actually fell asleep during this game, but it's okay because it took until literally the last minute of extra time for Balde to break this one wide open. And unfortunately for him and his team, they're out of here. Pacos is up again, hoping to get another defeat, this time at the hands of Espanyol. Things are going well right out the gate for Pacos as Braithwaite comes in and scores a screamer to put them ahead right at the start of the game. Immediately before halftime, Espanyol expand their lead and continue down the path to victory thanks to the infamous foot card Dennis Suarez. That will be all the action in this game and Pacos advances. So I made a mistake. Apparently I thought the Czech League was in FIFA 23 and I don't have a modded version because I don't know how to do that. So we're just going to act like you never saw Trinity sitting here. Even though they are in the lower half of the league, we're just going to act like you didn't see anything. Idiot! And after the Czech debacle, we find ourselves back in England for a matchup between Leeds United and Southampton. And after much boredom and waiting, about five minutes into the second half of extra time, we see a great goal by the American hero. Weston McKinney, who sends Southampton into the next round. Our next matchup sees two teams sitting at one loss apiece, Ager versus Sarang. Loser of this will become the largest landholder of the episode so far. We get a hint at that only a few minutes in when the captain of Ager has a great first touch to settle the ball, pushes it right around the defender and the goalie to go up 1-0. And after a great forward run by Sima, goalie basically forgets how to do his job gives up a free goal and that's 2 nil to Angers to add insult to injury they give up not only a third goal but also a fourth goal I think you see where this is going Angers is out of here and Sarang is in to the next round on the next spin Verona gets to take over some territory as they head into Serbia and also into Romania Santa Clara is the next team to be moving and they are going into Spain to take on Elche. The deadlock held firm until short of the midway mark when Tagawa got the ball in some space and did what a lot of other people do in this episode to find the near post and he slotted it home. That's going to be it and they see their way out of the tournament. Okum is coming up next and they are told to go to the northeast and from the center of their territory that means they hit Reed first before Hertha Berlin so they are going to play Reed. Let's get in. It took a bit of time for the tie to be broken, but thanks to Danilo in the 64th minute, he got a little bit of open space and fired the shot in the near post again and gave Bokum the advantage and the eventual win to see them out of the tournament and Reed sticking around. And for some reason, the wheel just cannot stop selecting Reed, so they are up next against the other main loser of the episode so far, Sarang. The first goal of the game goes to Sarang only 12 minutes in when Bernie Sanders, yet again, scores a great goal against a diving goalie. We then see the Cape Verde international Wagner make something out of nothing with a great turn and a wonderful shot that hits the top right corner, again, past a diving keeper. Both teams at that point decided they had had enough in the halftime whistle that they're not gonna score anymore, so we ended up at 2-0. Sarang has officially ended their losing streak and Reed is continuing on. I gotta be honest, I thought that was gonna be our final of this episode. So, I have no clue what to expect now. 
Turning our attention back to La Liga, we see LJ up against Valladolid. Right on cue, Valladolid. Take the advantage quickly in this game, thanks to a great goal by Kike Perez. They then expand their lead, thanks to Munchie. After a great corner comes in, Roque Mesa comes in to clean up the scraps and finds himself an absolute banger of a volley and advances their lead up to three, but then decides that it's a great idea to celebrate by showing people that you didn't floss that morning. Oh, great heavens! We then see a crazy turnover in midfield that leads to some quick passing and results in an absolute screamer by Oscar Planto. But with that, we see the biggest beatdown of the episode and LJ continues on in the tourney. Sampdoria makes their debut for this episode, heading to the southeast to take on Hellas Verona in a real classic Serie A matchup. And their debut starts off very hot. Gabby Adini does a nice step over, finds a little bit of room, and then slots it right past the keeper, doesn't even give him a chance to save it. But their lead did not last as Hellas Verona kicks off, runs down the field, and then scores an equalizer thanks to Jesus here. Sam Lammers. Fresh out of halftime, fresh off of eating that PB&J sandwich, just absolutely smashes this one right past the keeper. Keeper barely moved, right into the top left corner. Absolutely wonderful shot, but that is going to wrap up this game for them and send them packing just as soon as they came. Sibinic is told to go north from their Croatian homeland to take on Slovenia, and that is the new territory that they gain. The next spin of the wheel tells Hertha Berlin to go southeast and they will end up moving into the Ukraine. Shout out Ukraine. I'm gonna come. Oh. Our next match sends us back across the channel over into the United Kingdom to see Everton on their debut take on Southampton. Like Sampdoria, Everton is off to a very hot start. Early on when Onana gets a little tiny deflection back to him from Mari Gray, hits it with the outside of his boot, sends the keeper the wrong direction and has a wide open goal. 1-0 Everton. And unlike real life, the confidence is kind of flowing. They get a nice little corner kick and Damari Gray contributes yet again and nods this one right over the outstretched arms of the keeper to send them back home and out of the tourney. A third debut in a row for us as Almeria is selected to go up against the two-time losers in Pacos. Now it's officially a pattern. The debut team Almeria is off to a very hot start very early with some nice sweaty passing going across goal to Mbara for his first goal. Continuing his great game, Mbara gets another great pass and one times it into the right side of the net to give him the brace. But Butsky and Pacos are not gone yet as he's able to smash one home right past the keeper. But it doesn't really matter because Almeria goes right back down immediately after on a nice little chip pass and a volley that megs the keeper in a very embarrassing way. And not too long after that, they extend their lead to three and Ibarra gets his hat trick and 4-1 is how this one's going to end. If only they could have performed like that in real life, then they wouldn't have been in this video. Another debut here as Dundee United is up and they are selected to get off of their lazy bums and take on Southampton. Let's see if they can continue that debut magic. But unfortunately, unlike the last few games, Southampton's the first to strike off of a terrible turnover that War Pros capitalizes on and sends it into the back of the net. But Stephen Fletcher isn't ready to keep going in the tourney and he levels everything up at one. But we wouldn't end there with a little bit of late drama. Che Adams gets the ball with a little bit of space, couple touches, and smashes it with so much pace that the keeper's left that he could only tip it up and into the back of the net. And that is where their run in this tournament will end. Three losses in a row, but it's not going to be four. The wheel chooses Pacos to go next in the battle for the Southwest as they are set to take on Elche. And in the bout of the two crappers, Elche are the first to strike, with their countryman captain Fidel bouncing it right off of the keeper. And Fidel wasn't done there. He's being a great leader and he shows them with a great turn, touch, and shot and bends it right around the diving keeper Marafona. Pacos waits until basically the last minute to start their comeback as Macha ends up sliding this one into the opposite side netting to cut the deficit in half. But it was not to be as LJ end up finding another goal and putting this one to bed and finally ending their losing streak, but advancing the losing streak of Pacos. Sibenik gets chosen to go next and they're moving to the southwest, so we're just going to have them take over Bosnia. We're down to the last eight teams. The wheel picks Sibenik again. This time they get to go east against Hellas Veronas, but we 
come across the fatal mistake. So I definitely thought Subanic was in the game, and then I just realized that they weren't in the game, so... So I don't have to go back and redo everything. We're gonna just put Hedgic Split into this game, and say it's basically the same thing, because they're the worst Croatian team in the game. And we're just gonna act like this never happened. You didn't see anything. Starting this game off, we have some good play from the Confused Dogs, which eventually leads to an easy goal by Cologne. But Split gets the chance off of a short corner, the ball's crossed in, and on a crazy volley, flips it right past the keeper to tie it up at one. But the Dogs are not out here to play. A mini breakaway sees Hellos in a nice sweaty pass, gets Doig wide open in acres of space, and he smashes it. And they are finally out of the tourney. And since I'm even more of an idiot, AAB is in Denmark, and I basically already gave them Sweden, so congratulations. You've had Sweden this entire time. But Dundee United finally gets to make a move northeast over into Norway. Switzerland is neutral no more as Reed gets told to go southeast and takes over their country. Our next nice little territory move is Pacos moving northwest over into Ireland. With the next spin of the wheel, we get the two largest landholders pinned up against each other, Hertha Berlin versus Hadouk Split. Hertha wastes no time getting on the score sheet as a decent through ball finds Herdar in a bit of space and he scores it. But Split wasn't done there as 66 minutes in. Kalinic makes a great run in front of goal and lifts the ball right past the shot stopper, leveling things up at one. And that's how things would stay up until penalties. Hertha starts off on a bad foot, getting one shot blocked, but then their goalie comes back with a huge save to level things up and bring it back to 3-3. And then the goalie steps up and shuts the door again to get them the win. Now that's a comeback. That unfortunately you probably didn't want to have because now you're out of the tournament. The next matchup sees the final two teams yet to make their debut pinned up against each other, Groningen versus AAB. And this is a very lame game, but Groningen comes out of halftime and finds their shooting boots as they break through the defense with a very sweaty cross goal pass that ends up starting, contributing to, and closing out the score sheet. And that's all for that game. Down to our final five teams in its game of the two biggest land holders, Hedrick Split and Reed. And this game got out of hand real quick. Rovinovic and Split opened up the scoring first on some quick passes into the box, which leads to a near post shot and squeaks right past the keeper. Then they get another near post goal. There's a run through the defense that ends up in a ball bouncing off of the post into the goal. And then they score another goal. And then another one to make it five. Reed finally finds some magic to get one back, and then they score another one, but it's right on the stroke of the 90th minute, and it wasn't enough time to complete the comeback, so they advance in the tourney. Reed is selected for their sixth game, and this time up against a more equal opponent than last time in the AAB. With an amazing stroke of luck, Reed is actually able to take the lead in the game? We might be getting ahead of ourselves here as AAB has some great interplay, a great pass into the box, an even better layoff, and a great finish by Ever Folsom to tie the game up at one. And the passing clinic continues with a great give and go into the box, and Nicholas Hellenis pulls away from the defender and slots it home. His favorite way to celebrate is like any of ours. He shoves his face at the camera. And if you wanted Reed's campaign summoned up into one play, here it is. The ball comes in and the Reed goalie and Weissmeyer end up colliding in mid-air and the ball just falls right in front of the goal with nobody there and Hellenus, unnecessarily, decides to dive and head it in and that's 3-1. Reed apparently likes late magic but this one wasn't enough yet again but their streak continues. Six defeats now in a row. The wheel is spun for the penultimate time and Dundee United is selected to go across the English Channel and they will be coming up yet again against Reed. And the away team opens up the scoring and the only goal of this game here, Stephen Fletcher does a great job of holding the defender off and giving Middleton some time to get up there. And he finds a wonderful pass across the face of goal and Middleton just smashes it one time right past Radlinger, who just can't do anything in this episode. And that will see Reed through to the final of the Champions League and they are on a seven game losing streak. The wheels are simply a formality at this point, but Reed was selected to be the away team in this final of the Champions League. Pacos versus Reed. In real life, Pacos ended in 17th place, one point above last place, and they only got 23 points in 34 games, while Reed finished in a similar fashion, second to last, 
with only 18 points in 22 league games. Technically, from a statistics standpoint, Pacos is the worst team in real life. They ended up winning only 23% of possible points, while Reed ended up winning 27% of possible points. Let's get into what actually matters though. These teams should be fairly evenly matched. Pacos disagrees as they score only 8 minutes into the game. Adrian Buski, after some nice passing, smashes it right past the goalie to give the Portuguese side the lead. The Pacos lead increases 30 minutes later. After a short corner, the ball finds its way to the foot of Luis Carlos, who simply turns and puts it right into the back of the net. Following the halftime break, Reed defense forgot to come back out on the field. Luis Carlos finds himself basically unguarded, takes a couple of touches, and then puts it right past Radlinger to officially end the Champions League. There you have it. That is going to do it for the Champions League. SB Reed is your winner. They played by far a lot more than any other team, but they finished a whopping 0-8. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, a subscription, and let me know what you thought of the video. I got a couple more ideas in the pipeline, another Champions League video, and then a little something special for the lads. But I hope you enjoyed your time here. I really appreciate you clicking on the video, hanging out for a little bit. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And as we say, five head out.